Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. This is the Festool CT26 extractor. I've had this one for four years and I use it virtually every single day. It is simply brilliant. It uses bags which have a capacity just about 26 litres. Now in order to minimise the number of filter bags that need to go into the machine and then be thrown away, there are two solutions. Festool make a long life bag and that can be used time and time again and emptied. But there's another solution and about three years ago I bought a thing called a dust deputy from a company called Oneida which are based in the United States. Now a dust deputy is a cyclone and this is my old one here and basically it's connected to the vacuum uh, at the top uh, and your tools are connected through this tube at the side and as the air is sucked out so the uh, dust and debris comes into the cyclone whizzes around and then goes all the way down into this drop box uh, where the dust then resides and the air which is relatively clean then goes out through the central tube and on into your extractor and that makes the bags last an awful long time. Now the principal uh, disadvantages of using a uh, interceptor like this is that they're made of plastic and because of that they're going to attract static electricity. Static electricity can cause all sorts of problems, sparks in the workshop can cause fires and also that static buildup can damage the electronic components of any extractor that you might have attached to it. So along comes the ultimate dust deputy made by Oneida and basically this is using plastic parts which are conductive and as long as you have uh, hoses attached to it uh, which also have that conductivity like the Festool hoses uh, then uh, that risk uh, of static buildup is reduced. Now I've been contacted by a UK company called Tool Ovation and they are importers for Oneida Systems and they offered to provide the Newbrick workshop with an ultimate dust deputy. I told them that I'd only uh, accept one and make a video if uh, it met my golden rule and that is I have to be able to recommend a product to my very best friend before a video gets made. I will start by seeing what comes in the box when it's delivered. And then inside the main body here you've got uh, lots of accessories, uh, um, uh, some sort of brochure from Oneida, uh, the dust deputy and a length of hose. We're going to start by taking one of the grounding straps and uh, one of the buckles and with this bent bit facing away from you put the strap over the top like so, back in through that hole there and then back through the larger hole here and then it's available to be screwed in behind uh, the strap uh, bracket at the bottom. And we're now going to screw uh, both of those on uh, to the box uh, using the four uh, Phillips screws uh, provided. Next is to take the sealing rubber and we're going to apply that to the lid of the box and we've got to make sure that it fits all the way round and that when the two ends come together they are butted together with no gap. Now when doing this make sure that it's flat on this surface here and not against the inside of the lid there. So it's got to go flat on this surface. It will bend round the corners perfectly well, so try and do this in a clean place as possible. And then at the very end we've got to make sure there is no gap, so we've got to cut this very carefully. Now I've cut mine deliberately a fraction long because the foam can be compressed and there we have that on all the way around and there's a small piece left over and you can use this for all sorts of things, children's parties and things like that. Oneida really thought of everything didn't they? Right the next thing we're going to fix the dust deputy to the top of the or the lid of the 
Dropbox and we're going to use this piece of foam as a gasket. It's important at this stage to decide in which direction you want the uh, inlet port that's coming from the tools uh, into the dust deputy, uh, which way you want this to face because it can go in any one of six positions. Now once you've taken up the slack uh, you then need to tighten it up evenly and the way to do it is as follows. You choose the starting point and then you go from there two clockwise and give it a little turn and then go diagonally opposite. A little turn, then go two clockwise. Give it a little turn and then go diagonally opposite. Give it a little turn and then two clockwise. Now the next thing in the instructions is to put the lid uh, in position and then do up these straps and there's a hole at the top there that's where we're going to get this little lug to fit through like so and the same on the other side like so and what that does with that grinding strap trapped in between there it's making the electrical continuity between the top and the base. Right the next thing to do is to attach the uh, hose uh, which goes from the top of the dust deputy here uh, to the front of uh, the extractor and for the lower fitting onto a Festool extractor uh, this uh, right angle gadget is perfect. It goes on uh, simply like that and then pushes in to the extractor. Now one of the advantages of the Ultimate Dust Deputy is that you can put a plastic bag inside the drop box. Now ordinarily if you were to do that, that plastic bag would get sucked up and would interfere with the process of uh, separating out your debris. Uh, in order to overcome that, uh, there is a tube which links from a, a small uh, outlet here, close to the extractor, up to this point here, uh, and that effectively causes a very small vacuum to be created on what is effectively the outside of the plastic bag, keeping it down into the area of the drop box. So if you're going to use a plastic bag, you need this. Now, it says in the instructions you can shorten this uh, to whatever length you require, uh, and it just then pushes in uh, to these connectors. That's pushed in, and then the other one will push in like so. And that's it in place. Now, I've not actually cut mine uh, to length because at this stage, to be honest, I'm not quite sure uh, whether I'm always going to have this on top of my CT extractor. I might use it with another extractor. I just don't know. So I'm keeping my options open for the time being. Now the next stage is to take the, the lid off and just set it to one side very carefully. And in order to stop debris being sucked into that uh, bit of tubing, uh, there's a, a piece of foam which they supply and that goes down uh, inside what is effectively uh, the inside of this handle, but at this end where uh, the, the tube is connected. And all that remains now is for us to put a plastic bag in here. And it's gonna Overlap the outside like this, make sure it goes down fully. And we can put the lid back on. And secure that. One end. And here's the other end. And that's it. Now we're just about ready to go. Now when you do anything to a workshop vacuum machine, uh, whether it's putting a longer hose on there, a thinner hose, or putting uh, a cyclone interceptor along uh, the suction path, uh, you're going to change its performance. Uh, and I thought it only fair that I gave you some form of indication in this video uh, of how that performance might change. So I've created this gadget. Now it's not terribly scientific um, and it probably isn't linear uh, but I hope it will give you some idea of the relative performance uh, of uh, a vacuum in different situations. And what I've got is as follows. I've got a length of clear tubing here and this is a piece left over from when I made my dust hub in the workshop. 
and at the bottom there's a connector which is reasonably airtight and I've got in there a 27 millimeter hose and that will stay the same for all of the tests. As vacuum is applied here, so uh, this tube is going to be sucked down because this is a piece of uh, UK uh, drain pipe, uh, the sort of thing you have coming from your house taking the rainwater away, uh, and it just happens to fit fairly closely onto this clear pipe. I've blocked it off at the end, and at the very top, I've got uh, a bungee. So as the vacuum is applied, so this is going to get sucked down. And for each test, I'm going to run uh, the vacuum at three speeds. I'm going to run it at maximum, I'm going to run it at minimum, and I'm going to run it halfway in between. And I'm starting uh, for this video with a brand new bag from my CT26. It's very easy to fit, it goes on like so. That's it, ready to go. Now for this first test, I've got the vacuum with its brand new bag uh, and just a 27 millimeter hose. And it's all connected up and I'm going to do the first test on full power. And you can see it came almost to the bottom here. Next I'm going to uh, minimum power. And now to half power. So I've used the green pen and that's the Festel extractor on its own. Next I'm trying my original arrangement of my homemade uh, drop box uh, with the uh, cheap and cheerful dust deputy. Finally, we have the ultimate dust deputy. Uh, this is on full power. This is minimum power. And finally, middle. Well, I hope you can see these results. Now I've brought you in a bit closer. In uh, green is the Festel extractor uh, with nothing other than uh, its hose connected to my gadget. And so that's full power, mid power, and minimum power. In pink, uh, you've got my old dust deputy and my old drop box. So there's a significant difference at full power, even greater difference at mid power, and about the same difference here again at minimum power. But then in blue, uh, I've got the ultimate dust deputy. It's very close at full power, very close at mid power, and almost the same at minimum power. Now I think those uh, figures uh, speak for themselves. But if you're a busy contractor working from the back of your van on a daily basis, taking your tools in and out of various sites, uh, then this is probably not for you. But if you're in a static environment, uh, certainly if you're uh, an amateur or uh, pro-am woodworker, uh, then this may well suit your circumstances. Now, if you're concerned, you should check with the manufacturer of your extractor uh, to ensure there are no uh, warranty limitations with this type of equipment. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>